Welcome back to the MBH Podcast, Money Buys Happiness, Canada's best podcast. What? I'm going to come out and say that right now. I just made that up. Canada's number one <laughs> podcast. Me, us, you, this us. place, everyone, all of us together. Listen, hit the fucking subscribe button. Yep. If you watch this fucking podcast, you don't hit the subscribe button, we're going to have an issue. How are you going to know? Like, subscribe. That's, how you, so how you going to even it's know? Like two clicks. Click, click. You're not going to know. You took more clicks to get here, just click. And we got the TikTok running now, so you know, go so show run some it up love. On, run up the TikTok. We're going to be doing the shorts on YouTube, super short. Yeah, we're Keep getting short. short. We're getting short here. Anyways, before uh, we go too crazy. We just had a dance. Yeah, we started this off with a dance party. Got some good tracks. Amazing tracks. Great oh, idea from our guest, by the way. But we're here today with Mary Tompros. Yes. Okay, I just want to make sure I said Maria, that right. Maria, Maria. <laughs> oh, we've got American Idol here too. Yes. My goodness. Welcome. <laughs> Hello. Welcome, welcome. We're excited to have you. I'm excited to be here. I love you guys. And you know, the studio is like Disneyland to me, so I'm so pumped. <laughs> that's amazing. That's a, that's a good comparison, by the way. Yeah. No, no, no. That's it's a, like a, our Disneyland. Sometimes, sometimes it is. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes it is. Maybe good, sometimes, sometimes maybe shit. Okay. Yeah, exactly. No, we're excited to have you. Um, we've never really had a podcast that, you know, spoke about the things I think we're going to talk about. Um, which is super important right now. Which is super and important like right now. always, but... But more than ever now, yeah. just based on the state of, I guess, our country, our province, whatever, we'll, we'll get into it. But uh, Mary, for anyone who doesn't know you, introduce yourself. Who are you? What's the story? What's going on? Hi, I'm Mary. I'm from Toronto. I'm a mental health advocate. I've been dealing with a mental illness since 14. And then eight years ago, got diagnosed with a chronic audio and visual hallucination. So now I'm just here to just kind of raise awareness and let people know that there is hope it might not happen right away. Heck, it took me 15 years, but I promise you, it's totally worth it. I just don't know when, but Fair. it is worth it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. For anybody who doesn't know, audio, visual, is that hallucination? hallucination? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Explain. Okay, so basically, I have a person that's with me from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed. Depending okay. on my stress level, sometimes they're negative. Mm -hmm. conversations sometimes it's positive conversations sometimes it's conversations that make no sense fair so it's definitely it's like a intrusive inner thought except for it not being in my head it's a physical being interesting okay so how do you how do you like how do you get diagnosed with that like how, like you know what i mean like how at what point I guess it's a doctor yes. that comes and says, okay, like this is what we're diagnosing you with. Like what's the, what's the process? How do they come to that conclusion? Give me the rundown. So the process first started when I was 14. Okay. Total trigger warning. I did try and end my life at 14. Okay. So I got first diagnosed with depression and anxiety. And then as the years got on, they realized things actually weren't getting better. And I was experiencing mania. I was experiencing paranoia. I was experiencing the high and lows of depression. So they diagnosed me with borderline personality disorder, okay. which is on the border of neurosis and psychosis, which if you really get to know me, that makes a lot of sense <laughs> with everything that I have kind of juggling on. Yeah. And then about eight years ago, I had developed a hallucination. It first started off auditory and then about a week or two later it became a full-on so when you say auditory you mean it was just it was just a voice just voice okay yes it started off as just a voice in the shower i got out of the shower i was in second year university got out of the shower i realized my roommates were all at school so i was like what the hell sorry for swearing no no please <laughs> swear, swear. <laughs> fucking one <laughs> yeah. yeah i was like what the hell is going on i kind of thought i was losing my marbles but, but i was like you know what like no 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 there's yeah. no way then I was driving one day and I stopped my car abruptly and my poor roommate smashed her head on the dashboard because I had stopped because I had seen my hallucination. Wow. And then at that point, I just tried to ignore it, ignore it because I was like, there's no way. Yeah. And then eventually I was like, okay, clearly there's something wrong with me. So I told my psychiatrist and then they gave me medication, uh -huh. which I lied and said was working. I ended up doing street drugs. So for about... Okay five years i was on um cocaine and mm -hmm. ecstasy yeah and it was it actually got my hallucination away so i used it so they were like oh really? great this is working wow. awesome yay yeah one day at university i couldn't get my quick fix 
that was it like mm-hmm. done so wow. completely lost the grip of reality and then and, and then I ended up again in the psychiatric ward so that would have been my ninth time by that point but this wasn't a suicide attempt this was because I had like l- legitimately lost yeah. my mind and then <laughs> they had said let's try a few different therapies to see if maybe we can target so and so and then turned out they just said you know what this is going to be something that you're going to be living with forever so we have to find tips and tricks that work to work with it okay there's a lot to unfold like unpack here but i'm gonna i mean you kind of answered my first question but what i was gonna ask you was did they tell you like yeah like there's a way that we can kind of fix this at the beginning yes okay through different types of therapy okay like what exposure therapy okay what's that uh so i had to relive certain traumatic um events and things that would have taken place that would have allowed my hallucination to evolve okay and then we realized that it's not necessarily trauma mm-hmm. because all the exposure treatment and all the medications and things that we were doing wasn't working especially the medication it was huge the medication was not working i was on 25 milligrams of what's it called i believe it's called abilify okay and that's a third generation antipsychotic Okay. And I was on 25, which is one of the highest one. And a roommate of mine in the psych ward was on five at the time. And he couldn't even get out of bed. And I was on 25 still popping street drugs. Damn, okay. Yeah, so we were like, oh, okay, shit, this is yeah. not working. <laughs> so we just kind of now, I'm not on any medication. Now I'm just doing intense ACT Good and DPT you. therapy. That's amazing. Good for so you. So was it their methods that helped you? Or did you end up finding your own ways? A mixture of both. Yeah. I would say a mixture of both. Because... Be- because I had been in, cog- in cognitive be- behavioral therapy and dialectal behavioral therapy by the time my hallucination had evolved, I was a little bit able to grasp a lot of the tips and tricks, like especially the one where it was, I have to remember, it's not real. And that was something that was very difficult, yeah. is it's real to me, not necessarily real to others. Yeah. Yeah. So in my emotion mind, it's real. Yeah. But in my like rational wise mind obviously i know it's not real yeah so it's kind of almost facts sorry like it was sort of more like feelings are not facts yeah which a lot of people even the normal quote-unquote yeah. yeah. non-mental can't illness individual in. yeah. can't even take in feelings are not facts so everything that my hallucination is saying to me it's not a fact yeah. it's a feeling and i always have to remember that mm. Wow, that can be, I mean, feelings are not facts can be used in a lot of places, but I like how you use it. And I, okay, we'll, we'll go back to the hallucination. I want to just kick it back a little bit. The psych ward. I think that sounds scary to a lot of people. It sounds scary to me. <laughs> I'm curious, A, when were you admitted? And then B, what was life, how, how long were you there? And then C, what was life like there? Which time? <laughs> okay. Uh, Do you want to know the adolescent vibe first and then the adult yeah, like your vibe? Yeah, like your first, yeah. your first okay. kind of sure. exposure to it. My first time, I was 14 years old. Oh, my God. I shit my pants. <laughs> I shit my pants. I was like, what do you mean I'm being admitted? No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Because I had lied and said, oh, no, like it wasn't a suicide attempt. Like it was like a mistake. Mm-hmm. They were like, um. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Who are you playing yeah. games with? Yeah. I was like, there's no way. So I saw the movie, uh, what's it called? Flying Over the Cuckoo's Nest? Okay. Cuckoo's Nest something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Oh my God, that was the recollection. I was freaking out. I was sit. I literally remember the doctor said to me, like, we're going to have you governmentally formed. Excuse me, what is that? <laughs> yeah. I was like, what do you mean governmentally formed? So that means that, like, the government has formed you, so... I had a 72 hour hold and then after that they were going to assess if I had to stay there okay. obviously longer. Okay. okay. So the first time I'm told this, I'm freaking out. I'm looking at my dad. I'm like, I don't want to do this. He's like, honey, yeah. you have to, we're going to keep you safe. So now I'm 14 years old. You know me, I'm short. It's not like, <laughs> so I'm the short little girl. I'm looking at these two tall buff security men taking me upstairs. I'm like, oh my God. So we're going all the way to the F wing, which is in Sunnybrook, which is all the way at the back. Sorry to talk shit about Sunnybrook, but you can tell the difference. We are the old hospital, not the new hospital. So we're all the way at the back. So we go all the way up these stairs where you have to be like let in by security. There's paintings all over the wall, super nice. Everybody came outside in like F2 orange, yellow jumpsuits to greet me. I was like, Okay. okay, this is awesome. And that was not what I was thinking. I was like, oh, I was like, oh my God, how am I going to do my first night in here? God bless my roommate. 
on my first night, I was so scared. I actually jumped into bed with her. <laughs> nice. God bless. Yeah, yeah. We literally woke up the next morning. The nurses were like, it's your first time here, isn't it? Yeah. I was like, oh my God, can you tell? Can you tell? <laughs> So the first night was absolutely petrifying. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I was nervous, but everybody was so friendly. For sure. The hospital food's crap. Yeah. Again, of course <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. But everything, oh, I had to go to school mm-hmm. every day. Mm-hmm. So the teacher used to text my old, well, not text. She would email my old high school to get all my information. So I still had to go to class every day. My bed had to get made. I had to shower. And you think showering and making your beds easy? When you're in that state of mind, Mm -hmm. it's the biggest chore in the entire world. Oh, and they would make us go for walks every day. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, hello, do I I wanna go for a walk every day? (laughs) So it was a lot of taking care of yourself and it was the basic stuff that we're supposed to do, but because we're so go, 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 we forget. To do them, yeah. And the basic stuff are what ground us. Like Mm -hmm. it's what keeps us, I wanna say, not sane, but yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, 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 did did okay so how long were you in there for okay so multiple times so in the, so the first time the first the time. first time about a month and a half oh so it wasn't the three days they fucking oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. no so so let me tell you something usually you're not there for three days no yeah. offense <laughs> and anyone that's listening i would tell you something you're not there for three days yeah yeah, yeah. that's but, just like an intro and yeah, then they just they just tell you that and they then put you there for three days and then they tell you do you want to be voluntary or involuntary yeah yes obviously everybody after goes in Voluntary, voluntary because we know i mean it's kind of easier to get out after voluntary as opposed to involuntary because you're more i don't want to say compliant but you're more willing to obviously get yes. so voluntarily help. like pretty much you can go and leave at any point not so much go and leave at any point but you're here more or less on be- your own accord yes, yes. not ours okay yes. okay mm, okay so did that first time help you at all Oh, you can be honest. Okay, this is where it gets tricky. Now this was okay. You gotta remember, I'm from a Greek culture, yeah, from a European culture. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Sorry to cough. And this was 2007, eight. Mm-hmm. So mental illness was not talked about. Yes. Mental health was not talked about. This was viewed as a phase. Mm-hmm. So it's very difficult to get proper treatment and help when it's viewed as a phase. Yes. So in the beginning, very difficult. Obviously now everybody knows this is a phase and this is a lifelong yeah, journey, yeah. journey, commitment, whatever. Yes, but yeah. at the beginning, it was very difficult just because there was a lot of stigma yeah. attached to it. Um, in the psych ward, you're allowed uh, weekend passes. I okay. don't know if you know what, so basically, the whole point of a psych ward is you're supposed to after get like acclimated back into the real world. Yeah, back into society. So you go yeah. back to school for the day. You go stay at your parents' house for the night. So you do things that you like would They slowly like integrate you back into your okay. yes. regular life. Yes. Yeah, okay. So I got lucky where I got a weekend pass. I was so pumped. That was the day it was our Greek dance uh, group. I know I'm super <laughs> fond. So obviously I couldn't perform because I was out or whatever, but yeah. I was super stoked. Yeah. My dad let me go to Dynamite. I bought this dress. I went yeah. out. I bought a yeah. dress, got my hair done, everything. I still had my hospital band on because I had to go back the next day. Yeah. I remember we're in the car. I was with my dad and my sister who literally are the reasons like I'm like standing here today. My dad goes to me, I love you, but I don't want you to say anything about where you were. Just say they're running some tests on you. Mm-hmm. And at the time I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. I'm so angry, like, what do you mean? And then I realized that there was a lot of stigma and ridicule attached yeah. that he was just trying to protect yeah. me. Yeah, it wasn't like he, that he was necessarily um, like ashamed. It was more like just to protect you. Okay. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and at the time I thought it was a shame. Yeah. Like, he was I ashamed, yeah. He was ashamed. And it sucks that even parents have to not feel ashamed, but have to feel that they have to protect over something over a stigma yeah yes. but again 2007 2008 much different time different yeah. times very yeah. very 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 different times and i hate to say this and i hate to say this we haven't we've changed yeah but there's still we haven't really changed people here i have a hallucination and i work with children yeah what yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. you work with children yeah you drive a car uh-huh. yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah, function yeah. in life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, but that's not what, I know that's not what Hollywood, that's yeah. not what the, yeah, I know, yes. I know. But I promise you, everybody out yeah. there has something, let's say, quote unquote, wrong with them, and yeah. we all live a normal. Yeah, everyone's dealing yeah. with something. Now, to the ex- to what extent, that's where it differs, right? But I think to, 
have that idea of somebody where it's like, you know, that they're tripping out or they're confused as to how you may work with children or drive. Like that's, that's what you would want out of someone who's dealing with some sort of, um, we'll call it mental health issue. Like you would want them to, f- to be normal, quote unquote, normal in society rather than just be stuck at home doing nothing. You know what I mean? It's like going crazy, like whatever the case may be. But I actually want to actually want to say something. You're, you're, you're saying like you're like you're using certain terminology that I think some people would maybe be offended by. You're like lost my marbles, crazy, whatever. Me personally, I don't take offense to really anything. But I think if people were to hear someone in your situation, maybe using some of this terminology, I think people would maybe loosen up a little bit. Right. And I think, and I think that, and I think that's a big thing. I think people need to loosen up when it comes to mental health, because if we treat it so like serious, then I think that's where all these stigmas stay. Whereas like when we open up the floor and we can use some of these quote unquote, some people will call it offensive. I would say fun or funny or like whatever, like loose terms. (laughs) then I think people would, would start to look at this in a much lighter, like in a much lighter way, you know? So anyways, I I appreciate that. I just want to say I appreciate that. Yeah. You even said, um, with the stigma, what do you, what do you think? How do you think the media plays their part with the stigma of mental illness? I mean, the movies make us seem like we've lost our (laughs) mind. Everyone, every time. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, I like to put humor to not, I don't like to put humor to mental illness, but I've been in the system since I was 14 years old. Mm-hmm. I'm almost 29. I'm going to add a little bit of light humor. Of course. Light well, fun. Well, you need to, I yeah, think, at this to. point. Yes, like we, one of my friends and I, we actually, it's so funny, we somehow always got hospitalized together. Yeah, at the same time. Like, yeah. li- like literally at the same time. And we used to always joke about, oh, like we're in the loony bin or we're this or we're that. By the way, everybody in there joked with us about, oh, like we put the hot in psychotic or like yeah, we're yeah, this. And <laughs> it's like, it's so funny because yeah. like, yes, I get it. It's, I mean, it's not nice to make fun, but I'm also not going to feel like, I'm yeah. this weird, out, and yeah. again, weird is not even the term to say, but I'm just, I'm me, I have these issues, and I'm gonna laugh about it because you can either laugh or cry, yeah. and like, I'd I rather like laugh. There's a time to be serious about it, but there's also a time to to have some light humor on, yeah. you know, on the topic, on the conversation, whatever the case may be. A thousand yeah. ten percent. Like, okay, I'll never joke about, obviously, suicide, because that's something that mm-hmm, you yeah. don't joke about. Of course. But did I lose my marbles five years ago? <laughs> Fuck yes, I did. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Like I think about it, I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, oh my God, I lost them. Yeah. yeah. But like you have to look back at yourself and giggle and be proud. Like, oh my God, I did it. Yeah. My crazy ass actually did it. Yeah. Yay. This is where I was and this is where I am. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So why, why have you chosen now to, you know, speak out the way and, and, and advocate the way that you have? Okay, first, this all started, and I hate to put a damper on the mood. No, it's okay. First, this all started due to police brutality towards wellness checks. Okay. This is where I have an issue. You know you're going to the home where they are trying to end their lives. Okay. They're going, obviously, when somebody ends their life, they have a quote-unquote weapon. It's always uh, literally a kitchen knife. Yeah. It's not like it's a... AK-47, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. You can... Re- you can take a knife from anybody's yeah, hand. Let's no, not I, act like we need to have three SWAT guys on like the balcony. Like, is that what's see. happening? Yes. There Jesus. was this gentleman. He was 60, 63, 65 years old. Uh, Ijaz Chardi in Mississauga. Actually, that's where I lost my shit. This was a few days before Father's Day. Um, and actually, I went to all of the protests because I was like, this is just... Yeah. Like, I heard about this, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. So... So his family called, obviously, because he wasn't feeling well mentally, wanted to harm himself. He barricaded the door, wouldn't let them inside. Basically, long story short is, instead of disarming the gentleman, they shot him on his balcony. So they were on the balcony, and he was inside his living room. 63, 65-year-old man can barely actually, like, move and groove. Yeah. Yeah. Um... There was a bunch of others, same thing in Toronto, families called or they called for help. And because these officers were worried for their lives, 
Yeah. They felt the need to shoot and pretty much end their lives. And I hate to say this, but if I'm calling you to save my life and you're going to shoot my life, <laughs> stay at home. Stay home. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, save my yeah. tax dollars, please. Yeah. So is that yeah. happening a lot, a lot of the times that people are calling like unfortunately in the past like not death every time maybe but maybe there's a some some sort of uh fight with the fucking officer i don't know maybe they're you know i mean i can't really speak too much because i yeah, don't yeah, chew too yeah. much but i just know that when all this happened it was last year it was six of them okay like six in ontario passed away within like five to six months um, of yeah. each other and it was all wellness checks it was all bipolar schizophrenia psychosis pretty much everything that we don't speak about in the news Okay. So, so they're sending police. Yes. So, what is your, what is Mary's um, solution? Solution to yeah. this. I K. Okay, this is Listen, where this is where people are gonna be like, what? I do not believe in defunding the police because we defund, we give them reasons to make excuses. Uh uh-uh, uh, I don't want to hear nothing from your mouth. <laughs> if we give you money fucking train your people that's all i gotta say yeah. Yeah. if we take out money well this well that uh, uh, there's no wells and nothing mm-hmm. there's money figure it out because yeah. if you don't i will help you yeah and yeah. trust me you don't want me to do call it me give me a call like literally like you don't so, want my greek style coming up and <laughs> how, about, a slipper. how about like sending like even some sort of doctor as well like they're trying to now i believe really revamp and send more of the more of a different crisis team which for me I completely agree. Personally, at the end of the day, I've been in those situations. No offense to the officer or to anybody. I don't know you're there. The only thing I want to do is cause harm to myself because I believe other people's lives would be better off without me. Obviously, that's not true. Yeah, I that's know what that. That's, the that's what they're thinking. Yeah. But that's the thought. So where these people, aka the officers, come in to my home thinking I'm going to hurt them, I think you are all confused. After I called you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I called you to save my life. Yes, yeah. there's okay, but there's a weapon. There's a butter knife that I've already told you. So if I've disclosed it's a wellness check, I've disclosed the weapon, what fear do we have? Yeah. yeah. We can't take down one single person. Yeah. Damn. It's not Dwayne the Rock Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Even then, like I'm yeah. sure he'd be able to comply. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then one thing that always used to ruffle my feathers is we have large men in the psychiatric ward and we have these little nonna, little social workers coming them down with no force, mm. just words. Yeah. So if, yeah, they can yeah, do yeah. It. so if they can do it, there's no way grown individuals yeah. with significant physical power. Yeah. So we, so we got to get you in front of the Toronto Police Force. So you're, um, see, you're seeing all this happen and then you're like, okay, I got to say something now. Yeah. So I just okay. started blasting and obviously <laughs> polite way saying hi i have a hallucination this is me yada yada so this is how it started and then it ended up as i got more comfortable i started sharing my skills and my tips and tricks which i realized not only benefit people in my situation but it benefits everybody because we don't realize making your so okay example making your bed every day Mm -hmm. i make my bed every day Everyone's like, but why? Because no matter what, no matter how stressful your day is, when you come back home, your space is clean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's one little. And that you learn that from from the psych ward, yes. right? Yeah. Another thing, showering. Yeah. Feeling and again, I know this sounds vain to say, feeling good, looking good. To be totally honest with you, the mind is powerful. Yes. You can trick it easily. I'll never forget. I was in the psych ward. TMI didn't shower for a few days. The nurse threw me in. I was blow drying my hair in for that split second. I was like, I'm worthy and deserving of taking care of myself. Even though I don't feel it, yeah. I'm worthy and deserving of doing it. Because we forget that the basic things in life are actually what we need. Yeah, they keep you grounded. So I guess now these tips and tricks essentially that you've used to help yourself are also now just helping maybe people who aren't necessarily in your exact situation, but just, you know, in, in everyday life. Yes. Interesting. Okay. So, but when, so when, when you came online and you started basically speaking about your opinion on, uh, the, the way police are handling these checks and whatnot, were you originally taught, you weren't originally talking about your hallucination from that point or, or were you? Uh, so I kind of combined them both together. Okay. Nice. And then it became 
I guess, where I became comfortable enough to kind of explode my whole life. Yeah. And then I realized after that that there's a lot of members of families and friends and people that are like me or know somebody like me that message me saying thank you because you've given me hope because you've been honest you've had 10 hospitalizations mm -hmm. so my kid having three maybe that means i said they might have 12 yeah. but the point mm -hmm. is they're going to get there yes. and i know it yes so i almost became i don't want to say this and I know it sounds weird to say, but I kind of almost became hope yeah, for yeah. a lot of no, people. No, that's amazing. And yeah. yeah, you and you are. Have, have you, has anyone ever come to you, whether it be online or, you know, just in, in person, whatever the case is, that suffers from the same thing you do, the, the audio... And visual hallucinations? Uh, yes, yes. Yes. Actually, I've had a few people message me that have suffered, and I've had uh, family members that have had individuals in the psych ward, mm. and they wanted help. Wow. Like, so... Like Some, how do I how do I communicate with them or what do I say? Yes, and a lot of people have they they lose hope. Yeah, because nobody ever wants to hear that their daughter, their their son, their sister, their wife, their best friend doesn't yeah. want to live to see another yeah. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nobody. It's a hard ever, thing. Yeah, it's a hard thing to take in. Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, <laughs> many people do this. Well, is it me? Is it me? Is it me? And no, it's not you. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's other factors, and you have to just understand that. It's not always about you, it's yeah. about them. So don't yeah. also make it feel like it's about you. Well, it's tough, right? I think like, you yeah. know, the brain is a complex thing and everyone's brain is completely different and they think differently and they see things differently. So yeah, like I think, I think that's even something that I wonder if people are, are like, are, are, you know, maybe making courses about or talking about like how to live with someone who may live with this. Um, I think it's gonna come from people like yourself that have experience that are going to come out and, and talk about it. You yeah, know? no, because like, I, I think, think like, like exactly. I think it's like, okay, for you, for example, to speak on your own situation, that's one thing. And maybe you're speaking to people who are in the same situation as you. But I think there's a lot to learn for people who live with, are related to, or live around someone who may be in your same situation. Yeah, we were talking about it too, the people around you and how important they are yeah. while you're going through this, right? And so, a little personal, but... how. Well, I'm gonna ask you anyways. We got very, very <laughs> personal. Yes. Go for it. <laughs> Your family now. Yes. How how has their development been since I guess learning about your audiovisual hallucination from the first moment till today? Let's say. Okay, so this is where it gets a little tricky. And God bless my family. They're very good at being super transparent about this whole thing. My so I grew up with my father and my sister. Mm. My mom, she had her own. I think undiagnosed health issues mentally. So she uh, left me when I was a kid and then came back years later. So it was just my sister, my father and I. Okay. So they have been my rock. They've been everything. At the beginning, it was hard for the three of us <clears throat> to, I don't want to say coexist, but it was very difficult for sure. because there was a lot of stigma. This happened in 2008 at the beginning. Yeah. So this was very difficult. My sister was also a young child. Mm. So to be 12 years old dealing with this, that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And she didn't know how to handle it for no. sure. And my father being a single father as well Same in 2008, thing. very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. So I give them full credit. They were very supportive, sometimes a little too <laughs> supportive, which yeah. kind of kind of yeah, ruffled right. a few feathers. <laughs> yeah, messed things up. Yeah, and yeah. then as things got older and I wasn't getting better, I got more angry, so I lashed out. Mm -hmm. And then when I developed my substance abuse problem, my par my dad and my sister were still there for me. I just kind of pushed them Push out them of away. the way. Yeah. And even throughout my whole hallucination journey and everything, same thing, they've been very, very supportive it's yeah. difficult for them because they see how much pain i've been through mm -hmm. and it's hard to hear i don't want to live anymore or of course yeah. it's or all the things that my sister had to unfold with everything with me i feel awful mm -hmm. she was in grade nine having to not only focus on her school but making sure that my stuff was getting handed in and making sure my dad so it yeah. was definitely yeah. a whole world of yeah so they no, that's were very amazing. Well, I mean, you know how important family is, but so I guess to, you know, you're you're probably lucky. I'd say you're lucky to have a family that was willing to support you through that because people lose support from their family for a lot 
less for than a lot that. less. You know what I mean? Uh, yes, no, they, they, I say all the time, my dad and my sister, even when I was in rehab, even in the group homes, even in the psych ward, yeah. they, even when I said, please don't come, I don't want to see your face, they still came. That's crazy, they brought yeah. me a- everything and anything, my fidget toys, my coloring books, food. Yeah. I really, I really feel awful for what I did with yeah. how I behaved towards them, but I was going through my own issues. Course, I, yeah. I just kind of hated the whole world yeah. and they never stopped yeah. kind of being there. But it definitely was hard because no parent or no sibling wants to hear. No, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, yeah, it's, it, that's tough. That's very tough. Yes, and being 14 at the time. And, a, and like, I even feel like a Euro, there's a European thing. Like, they're like, what the hell are you talking about, right? They're like, Imagine trying to tell like your 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 nonna, like hey, like this is this is what I'm going through. I had to pray at the beginning. It was go pray. Yeah, yeah for like, sure. Ah. Holy shit. I was like, I don't know if we know what a yeah. chemical imbalance looks like, but yeah. I don't know if theuli, which means God in Greek. I'm yeah. I'm like, I don't know if he's gonna come out and bless nothing, but yeah. Yeah. okay, Grandma, I'll like That's entertain crazy. this yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah. So okay, so and have they been supportive of I guess now your journey speaking about? What's been happening? Yes. Uh, I know they totally are. And okay, so also, I guess, flash forward, my mom is in my life okay. now. We're more friends than really... Than mother, daughter. Mother, daughter. Yes. Yeah. Like, I have one parent. Yeah. It's my dad. Yeah, yeah. But you have another friend. Yes. Yeah, who, okay. I love her. She's supportive. Yeah. We are working on things. Yeah, which is good. So, her, so she's made a turnaround, and I'm very proud. And the reason, and actually, it's funny. I've never spoken about my parents' divorce until this yeah. conversation right here. But I think everybody has to know that to the parent that abandons you, it was not your fault. Mm-hmm that parent unfortunately had other issues going on yeah. and you got put in the crossfire, mm-hmm. but it was never your fault. I feel awful for all the trauma and all the guilt that's still heavily clouded on a lot of us. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it wasn't my fault. And that's something that because I know it wasn't my fault, her and I have had a really good relationship, if that makes sense. Yeah. And my dad, my sister and I, yeah. I mean, we, I mean, we scrap it out, but yeah, but that's family. That's how well, it goes. Family it exactly. Yeah. No, no. And, and I respect you being willing to, you know, build on what, whatever the relationship is, let's say, with, with your mom. Like, I respect that because people make mistakes in life and you got to be able to accept that. Big and small mistakes. Um, so I have a lot of respect for you because a lot of people, one mistake between a family member, a friend, a girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, they're done. Out of my life. You know what I mean? So... Kudos to you, because I think that people can learn a lot of lessons. You got to fucking forgive. It's you don't have to forget. A hundred percent. But you have to forgive. And it's not even forgiving for them. It's for you. Yeah, true. Yeah. Like I didn't forgive anybody for any other reason other than myself. Mm-hmm. The moment I forgave, I've never forgotten. Yeah. <laughs> Hence why I have all these still issues. Yeah. But <laughs> but I've forgiven because why am I going to allow anybody to hold? any sort of power yeah over me when yeah. you forgive you almost bring like peace to yourself yes like it brings you peace yes you let the world know that nothing is going to hold the power over you over yeah. you and that goes in with mental illness with mm. my hallucination yeah is no matter what goes on in your life you have to know that nothing holds the power over you but you yes. so if you want to let this affect you go for it but remember you're only hurting yourself no one else because you deserve the life that you've always wanted we're gonna just chop that up as a reel right now jason if you're watching this chop that up buddy that was a huge one <laughs> i okay go yeah, i, I want to just chat uh, just about mental health a little bit um when we were speaking it's probably a couple months ago you said that there was a difference between mental illness and mental health what is that difference Ooh, okay, I believe I believe everybody goes through mental health. I believe everybody has sad moments. I believe everybody has anxious moments. I believe everybody has intense emotions. Yes. Mental illness, I find, is something where it's a real detriment, a constant, ongoing detriment, and that's why 
I find that sometimes we label things very easily, yeah. like sad and depressed. Depression is your body saying, fuck you, I'm done, I'm not doing this anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sad is a moment of grief, of loss. So True. I feel that's where, because we throw out words, so people say, oh, I'm so anxious. No, you're nervous, that's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And because we're throwing out these terms so loosely, it's giving people with borderline, bipolar, schizophrenia, some hierarchy. So True. I believe we all have mental health and there is people that have mental illness, but I believe there's a difference between having sad moments and waking up not wanting to live for days. Yeah, well, there's, there's a big a difference. difference. Yeah, there's a big difference. And I agree with you. I, I think I actually agree with that statement. I think that a lot of people are putting labels on a bad day, right? Oh, now I'm this, or now I, now I have depression. It's like, no, 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 like, you're allowed to have a bad day and that's normal, but that doesn't mean that now you suffer from like chronic depression all of a sudden, right? And I think that that probably, maybe eventually, if said, said enough times in your own head, can probably, and this is just me speculating, but if you tell yourself you're depressed a million times, you might actually become depressed. Manifesting that. Yeah, like, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and look, I don't know, there's no, there's no science to back that up, that's me speculating, but that's what I believe. If you say something enough times, you eventually become that. It's funny that you say that because in DPT, there's a skill called fake it till you What's make it. What's DPT? It's, okay, so here's where I'm going to butcher it. Dialectual behavioral therapy. Okay. So basically it's sitting with the emotions, accepting the emotions and moving forward. Yeah. So this is another part of therapy, which I'm in, that I've been in for years. Mm -hmm. And this is the other part about a healthcare system that I hate is it's not it's free if you wait three years or you pay five hundred dollars a week for this therapy. If it's free wait, if you wait three years. What's the waiting gonna do? Oh, though? like it's like a wait list. Yes, yeah, so a wait list oh. at KMH or any kind of hospital, oh. yeah. or you end up doing the privatized thing, which is what I had to do because my symptoms got so bad. So that's why now I share all of my skills because I was like, fuck if this, people aren't gonna pay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The hell someone can afford it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no. Three years of fucking wait. That's a lot. Yeah, it's wow. crazy. Okay. Yeah, it's it's yeah, yeah. absolutely it's. Yeah. It's very, very crazy. So I now like to share all of my skills because I want people to know, listen, these skills are not just even for people like me. They're for everyday skills. And the one skill that I find the most is fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. So pretty much in your head, fake it that you're happy, you're gonna make it because eventually you will be happy and you are going to make it. Yeah. Because our mind is super powerful that we can trick yes. it, especially, especially with the skills of DPT. It's not tricking the mind, it's accepting what's going on, but also allowing different emotions and feelings yeah. to go through, like the other skill, half smile. So when you're crying, just crack a little bit of a smile because then it sends a message to your brain saying that everything's going to be okay. Interesting. Mm. I, I, I've read that like smiling, even when you're sad, it releases, yeah, it releases serotonin uh, in your bloodstream yeah. to your brain. Yeah, that makes sense. I respect that. And I respect that you're giving out these tips because you're being like, fuck, you shouldn't have to wait three years and you shouldn't have to pay 500 bucks a week. Here it is. One of my buddies, I, I tell everybody this, I'll never forget this. We waited a couple years. My parents said, fuck this, we're paying for privatized. My buddy couldn't afford it. We bury him the Monday, the Wednesday, they call for the assessment. Are you fucking kidding me? Come on. Swear on my life, true story. Wow. And I'm sit and by the way, this is common. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry to say this, mental health treatment is a right, it's not a privilege. Facts. People don't have three years to wait. Heck, we don't even have a year to wait. <sighs> By that point of my parents waiting two years, I was in the hospital three or four more times yeah. before my parents said, we're not waiting any longer. Yeah. Yeah. Privatize the shit before we lose her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Wow. So we have families constantly going into, families are going into debt constantly just, just to, to save their loved ones. So, so, so you think that we need more government funding in that area? Significantly so, yeah. more. Like a three year waiting list? What the yeah, fuck? That's just for hold my wait, just for the assessment. Then after the assessment, then you gotta wait more. You gotta wait six months. Then based on your assessment, they'll decide when you're coming yeah, in next. Yeah. Wow. wow. That's man, crazy. I'd get fucking rattled, man. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay, listen, I have a question. Um and and you you go as far as you'd like to go. I think 
people would would meet. I don't I don't know how much you share on your story. I watch it all the time, but thanks. The, 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 the hallucination, <laughs> the hallucination, <laughs> your hallucination. What 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 are you willing and what can you explain about that as a whole? Okay, so it's a person. Obviously, okay. it's a person. Okay. Um, it's somebody that I obviously don't know, which is. I think usually, most of the times, usually okay. how it goes. Okay. Um, I don't want to say we're friends, but I guess. Okay. We're, I, yeah. I guess. Yeah. We're friends. So from the time I wake up yeah. to the time I go to bed, it is next to me. It's currently sitting right here next to us as wow. we're doing this. That's crazy. It did say a few things throughout mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. conversation. Nice. It will comment on anything and everything. But now if I am having a really awful moment or I get into an argument with a loved one, oh my God, you bet your bottom dollar my hallucination is reminding me I'm horrible, mm. I'm this, I'm, oh my gosh. Wow. Everything. The day that I did the event here with Self Love Supply, yeah. also thank you guys for letting me do the event here. Yeah. Love you guys. Leading up to the event, my hallucination was so proud. Yes, you're doing it. Woo, 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 woo. All of a sudden, I get this panic that I'm a complete failure. Boom. You suck. What are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Wow. I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm like, yeah. you need to stop right now because it's going to get into my head. So like, sometimes you'll see me like walking down the street and I'm like, can you shut up? Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, I did that in public. But it's just because sometimes I just need to just focus on what's going on and not so much yeah. yeah around me so so would you like would you say essentially it's almost like a i'll just say a ball a ball of like whatever emotion that you're feeling in that moment yeah, sometimes yes sometimes yes it's just a human of whatever i'm feeling yeah that kind of emotion um Sometimes that human can play really good tricks on me and allow mm. me to really believe that reality, yeah, like which whatever. can be a little, I don't want to say, it's not scary like it's dangerous for anybody else. Yeah, of course. Just yeah. dangerous yeah, of course. for yeah. me. Yeah. Again, I would never harm anybody else, yeah. only myself. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, trigger warning. But <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, never though. <laughs> never, <laughs> never, never, yeah, never, never, okay, never, 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 yeah. never. But yeah, so it's, it's definitely, I don't want to say a best friend, Yeah. but I mean, it's somebody that will never leave mm -hmm. my fucking side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So, so you believe that it will never go away. This is where I don't want to say like sad or whatever sad story, but we were told it would have gone away years ago uh -huh. with certain treatment medication, but because it hasn't yeah. now, instead of me having my hopes, now I come to terms with this is my life forever. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to learn to vibe with it. Yeah. Actually, funny that we're saying this. I like that word vibe with it. <laughs> learn to vibe with it. Yeah, Literally, yeah. it's funny that we're saying this because today, actually, I'm going to go start my new treatment right, after right this, on. which is so exciting. I'm going to do therapy with my hallucination. I'm nervous as fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's going to be cool because it's the first time. It's the first time. Um, so years ago, I would. So I've. I haven't physically touched my hallucination in five years. It will touch me, and I don't mean inappropriately like yeah. that, okay, everybody? <laughs> but it will touch me. I won't touch it. Uh -huh. I did touch it years ago. Actually, I had to say goodbye, this whole hug situation. Very traumatized. I mean, not traumatizing, but it sucked because I said goodbye and... Yeah, like, and, no, and this nothing, is it, yeah. Nothing went away. Nothing happened, so yeah. I've never touched it, but I've communicated. Mm -hmm. So now to go into full-blown, like, potentially hugging and all that stuff, it's going to be a little bit weird. Yeah. But it's going to be exciting and nerve-wracking. Yeah. So is, is this is this therapy led by somebody? Like Yes. It's, okay. Yes, it's going to be led by my psychiatrist and I believe another psychotherapist. Okay, cool. Wow. So for the record, for people, like, that they're probably trying to understand because because no one speaks this openly about a situation that you're in which again yeah, I, sorry i, I, really, I mean I no, 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 no it's amazing it's amazing <laughs> you literally see another person completely all the time okay, okay. all the fucking yeah. time like i knew that but i just wanted to ask the yeah, question yeah. for anyone listening yeah and watching. no no i see a full person all the time question famous question 
Where does it go when you're driving? Where does your friend go when you're driving? Yeah. Obviously not on top of you. Yeah. So it finds a section in the car yeah. to sit. Restaurants, friends' houses, same thing. A lot of my friends, I give them full credit. When, when I'm not engaging and I'm looking, family, same thing. They know exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. They allow me to look. They do your thing. Do yeah. my thing. One thing is sometimes they won't even sit there because they'll know like. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It needs a sense. spot. Yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 So I give everybody credit for allowing me to live my. Accepting it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, technically, have I lost my marbles? Sure. But who <laughs> hasn't well, who lost their marbles? Yeah. Exactly. Who the fuck has it? Yeah. We've all lost our marbles. <laughs> everybody has a intrusive thought. Of course. Yes. Everybody has thoughts where they feel good about themselves mm -hmm. and thoughts where they feel bad about themselves. Correct. So when you look in the mirror, sometimes you don't say nice things about yourself, yeah, right? Yeah, of course. Sometimes you're like, damn, I look sexy, I'm fire. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you're like, I'm a piece of shit. Yeah. Sorry for... Yeah. Everybody, that's with everybody. Yeah, yep. everyone has that. Now just think of just a human being saying it to you. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the only difference. Yeah. So I deal with the same day-to-day -day stresses. Boys, friends, family, yeah. school, you name it, yeah. everything. Yeah. The only thing that makes me different than you boys is I just have somebody here with me that you can't see or hear yeah yeah, but yeah, yeah other yeah. than that but well, we lost our marbles too yeah believe me <laughs> like literally <laughs> even oh. dean over there no but, guess, like <laughs> no but i guess what you're actually explaining that, that i guess that was my original question earlier like when i said it was like almost like a ball of your th of thoughts I, I like i like the way you explained it it's sort of like everyone has intrusive thoughts yes yep. you're just experiencing it in a different yep. way than let's say i would or ernesto would or dean right? yes wow yeah that's amazing like i mean like that's it <laughs> well it's just I think it's crazy how humans work, how the mind works, and everyone's so different and so unique. But I think that should be celebrated more often. Well, it's even like going back to the things that they were kind of making you do, make your bed, go for a walk. Like that should show you that the solutions they're using uh, can really be used on anyone. For like, you, anything. For, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, those are just, so I wanna ask you this. Out of everything that I guess you've experienced and you've learned, what's been the takeaway? Especially from, let's say, the psych ward. Was there any takeaway from that where you're like, okay, I learned a lot from this situation or this person or this doctor? Honestly, as silly as this sounds, the basics. Yeah. The basics. Exercise. And I'm not saying run 10 kilometers like me in the <laughs> yeah, morning. I'm not saying that. We see you, by the way. I'm not saying that. We see you. I'm not Actually, though, my running, actually, I got into that because... Obviously, I had to find a different way to not substance abuse. Mm. So yeah. working out, all that stuff. But I'm not saying working out, like lift, those yeah. weights and stuff. Go for a walk. Yeah. Mm. Do yoga. Throw a dance party. Yeah. Literally, like what we just, we just did, did before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Throw a dance party. Get your body moving and grooving. Mm -hmm. Eat I'm not saying eat clean every day. Okay. Definitely have your Chick-fil-A. You yeah. know oh, me. Oh, I yeah. definitely <laughs> gotta dip in that sauce. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also Take care of yourself. Take yeah. care of your body. Mm -hmm. yeah. Shower. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, when you look in the mirror and you see somebody put together, yeah. Yeah. You feel you're good. like, oh shit, yeah. I can do this. When your environment is organized and tidy, no matter how stressful the day is, you come back home and you're like, okay, at least my space is clean yeah. and organized. Yeah. So really the basics is not we all could benefit from the basics yeah. and i mean we all and i don't everybody. mean not just in the mental health and mental illness i mean even the regular joe mm -hmm. get up spend a half an hour go for a walk yeah make your bed clean your house eat yeah. a good breakfast start the day yeah. if you notice that okay you know what things are getting too much right now take five minutes to yourself do deep breathing play a mindfulness game just do something to we live in a world where people think that we can't just remove ourselves during our day at work yeah. of course you can yeah you go to the washroom for five minutes to go on tiktok yeah use that time for five minutes of a walk or something yeah. go for a walk mm -hmm. do a quick breathing yeah do box breathing do something yeah and that's that, that's like the I remember talking to you months ago and I was just, I was asking her, I'm like, oh, like, so what the fuck did they get you doing in the psych ward? Like, mm -hmm. yo, like, 
every day like what was happening and she's just like yo i was making my bed i was taking <laughs> yeah. a shower yeah. and it's 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 crazy because like a lot exercise. of people won't know that a yeah. lot of people won't know that just based on the stigma right they'll just yes. be like yo what are they doing in there what yeah, what's yeah. going on and, they and they're just doing down and fucking <laughs> there's no stra- let me tie something there's no straight jackets yeah. Yeah. you're not barbed to nothing are you allowed to leave the ward not no. well i mean there's levels yeah. yes. to being allowed to whatever but no is it jail well i mean <laughs> i mean the first five times i thought it was but obviously no it's not yeah. but it's not it's nothing it's nothing to be scared about it's a place where you go to get better yeah. and another thing for anybody that is listening and for family and friends that have been in and out of a psych ward this is what i've always said is you take your car in to get an oil maintenance change right mm-hmm. Your kid or you going into the psych ward is the same thing. It's just a quick maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. It's not 10 steps backwards. Yeah. Yeah. It's 10 steps forward in a different direction. It's true. Your car needs oil. You take it for oil. So that way you have another three, four, five years. I don't know. I'm yeah. not good yeah. with cars. Yeah. But yeah. like yeah. I assume. Yeah. 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 So just view it as you're a vehicle. Yeah. You're going in for maintenance. And there's nothing wrong with that. The more you maintain or the more you get help, the longer you live, the longer your car. Kind of same situation. So by the sixth hospitalization, I used to joke around with the nurses saying, I'm back for a tune-up. <laughs> <laughs> and funny thing is, all the nurses and everybody knew me at that point because I was there so much. I was a frequent flyer. I made a joke saying that I should have my own parking spot, literally. So yeah, yeah. so just, you got to just remember that there's no such thing as taking 10 steps back when going into the psych ward. Yeah. And yeah. if you have to go in, it's okay. And if you're governmentally formed, you're not a criminal. Mm. It's no big deal. You can still fly and leave the country. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, trust me, I was governmentally formed. And then I literally flew off to Florida to go to Disneyland, obviously, like after yeah. Yeah. I was in recovery. But it doesn't affect nothing. It's not a criminal, nothing. It's yeah, just. Yeah. I know, because there's such a stigma. Like, you actually got to say, like... So many people are like, wait, you were heavenly formed? I was like, yeah, it's okay, it's okay, it's, it's just fine. big words, and they're just like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have one famous question we always ask, but before I get to the famous question, I just want to talk about the lockdown that Toronto has just entered, or Ontario, I should Another say. Another one. Another one. God help us all. <laughs> we obviously know, and there are tons of statistics that have come out, and I'm like, don't fucking quote me on them, <laughs> right? But they're there, if you they're look there. for them. We're gonna like, get that, like, <laughs> me- that, that like mental illness is on the rise. Now, what exact forms of it, I don't know, again, but there, you know, I've, I've read crazy percentages. My guy, Roman Babber, shout out Roman Babber. Suicide Babber. rates as well are crazy really, right now. You know, all these things. Uh, mental illness, suicide, um, overdose. Substance abuse. Yeah, yeah, substance, substance abuse. Oh, yeah. So all of this is on the rise, and our government, by the looks of it, with a little bit of common sense, doesn't seem to be looking at it as a real issue. Um, I'm just curious, what are your thoughts on the current state of we'll just say Ontario for now um, and the way that they're handling it and maybe the mismanagement of the uh, of, of mental health and all the things we spoke about with these lockdowns yeah. like uh, in even maybe touch upon how it, it affected you okay so this is where I feel like I'm gonna get a lot of haters so whatever no, let, me just, no, be surprised. No, be surprised. Good, good. let me just throw it out there when the pandemic started and still now I get it. It's real, whatever. You're not going to stop me from seeing my friends or my family. Yeah. One thing I give all my friends and my family credit for, they all said Mary lives alone. She has a mental illness. I don't give a fuck yeah. what the rules are. Region jumper, this bullshit, yeah, yeah. none of that. <laughs> yeah, nah, nah, nah. Yeah, she yeah. wants to sleep over and do whatever she wants. Yeah. Same thing with my psychiatrist and my other doctors. They told us, go see your family, go for a walk, go do this, go do that. Because at the end of the day, and I've said this before, COVID's not gonna take me out. My mental illness will take me out. I've had friends in and out of the psych ward throughout this. Heck, my bag's been packed multiple times throughout this pandemic because there was a part of me, and this was, was it two days before Christmas? I went to a substance abuse drop-in. Mm. Ob- I'm, trigger warning again. I wasn't feeling like doing it, but I was, I was getting sick of this. So yeah. I needed something, yeah. something just to go get grounded and remember that I'm not alone. Mm-hmm. This lockdown 
has caused division yeah. for a lot of people. People that are not vaccinated feel like they're worthless, which is not true at all. Regardless of your vaccination status or not, I love you. I don't give a shit, and nor should this government. We have bigger issues at hand. We are separating families. We are separating loved ones. We are putting fear we have five-year-old children miss mary i think i'm gonna die you're not gonna wow. die sweetie you're gonna be fine yeah. you're gonna be okay Come i on. promise you you're gonna be okay but i'm not allowed you are allowed sweetie you are fine and mm. the parents are messaging me saying i don't even know how to take this anymore because my kids are withdrawing from activities they're depressed I mean, do you blame them? They can't yeah, do anything. They can't, do yeah. they can't see their friends. Yeah. I know there's a pandemic going on. I'm not stupid about it. But the bigger issue at hand is the mental health. We have the substance abuse rate has skyrocketed. Yeah. Yeah. I've been clean for five years. Two weeks ago, I went into a drop-in yeah. center. I've not been hospitalized in five years. My bags are packed yeah. Yeah. because I'm being told because I'm this, this, that I'm I'm unworthy. I'm what? Yeah. Well, everybody's worthy. Everybody's deserving. Yeah. What are we doing? Mm -hmm. We're going to, and I hate to say this, but we're going to end up losing people to mental health and substance abuse as opposed to what we're supposed to be protecting people from anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we already have. I think we already have and and that and think that's that's a big issue that's gone unnoticed by our government. But well said. Holy shit. Well fucking said. Yeah, it's, it's all facts though. Yeah. Straight no, up, no, it's it was very facts. well said. The thing is when me and you say it, we just sound like a bunch of We just assholes. sound like a fucking yeah, a bunch <laughs> yeah. of fucking crackheads just yeah. snapping. <laughs> no, that was very well said. And I agree with I agree with everything you're saying. Um the, the for for me, I feel very bad for people. Yeah. Um who are dealing with some type of mental illness in this in the current state of Canada because they are really, um, you know, like just just they're 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 not helping them. They're they're not giving them the help they need. And and I would say they're actually limiting what they had originally in terms of the help that they had um, and you. whatnot. Like the wait lists are longer now because yeah. of the lockdown, and yeah. we have to do virtual therapy. Whoa. Yeah, see? <laughs> what That's the crazy. hell? Virtual therapy? What the hell? Yeah. I need a connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you know how many times I'm like, uh, doctor, uh, yeah, it's you're lagging. fuzzy. Yeah. It's lagging, so we're like, can we move to a phone call? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I just spent half an hour crying <laughs> to you, and I want this to a phone call? Are yeah. you serious? Yeah. yeah, craziness. How do you think people can cope during this lockdown? Honestly, I hate to say this, but go see your family, yeah. go for walks, go see your friends. Yeah. The friends and family that don't wanna see you because they're anxious, because of the pandemic, do not take it personal. Yeah. Never take it personal. Mm -hmm. The friends and family that wanna see you, go see them. Yeah. Um, I have a few friends, you know one of my yeah. best friends, yeah. who God bless her, she's let me come over no matter what. Mm. I have some friends that are like, you know what, I'm a little bit worried. That's okay, I don't take it personal, yeah. but I do have to see people. Yeah. So my best advice is if family and friends are willing to see you, go see those people, yeah. go out for a walk. Yeah. Go out, go find a trail, yeah. go for a walk, yeah. do what makes you happy. Obviously we have to follow the restrictions because we yeah. have no other choice, yeah. Yeah. but don't let those restrictions cloud what you can do. Yeah. You can still, as silly as this sounds, with your girlfriends, get dolled up, mm -hmm. meet up at the house, yeah. and have a dinner together. Yeah. yeah, facts. Yeah, it's true. Jam on music. Yeah. And we're going to be at a party. We were just jamming here, and we felt like we were at a club. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, <laughs> DJ, we missed yeah. some lights and whatever. Yeah, yeah. A couple but of lasers. Yeah, yeah. Make it your own. Go mm -hmm. into, not Mary's world, but go into your own world through, yeah. through this pandemic. And if you want to throw a party in your house, baby, throw the party. <laughs> yeah. Who cares? Throw the I party. Love that. I love I'm that. about to throw a jam, dude. Mary, listen. <laughs> right after this, we're right after dancing. This, right, right after this, right after this after we're this. dancing. As you know, we are the MBH podcast, Money Buys Happiness. Ooh, my favorite question. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of the term money buys happiness? Money buys health and health buys happiness. Yeah. So let me maybe yeah. go more into Unpack that. Unpack that a little bit. We live in a beautiful country yeah. where to get proper mental health treatment, 
or any treatment, but specifically mental health treatment, you need money. Mm -hmm. And that treatment makes you happy and makes you live a long life. Mm -hmm. So does money buy happiness? In a sense, yes, because yeah. money buys health. Mm -hmm. And health equivalates to happiness. Yes. So unfortunately or fortunately, <laughs> depending on how you look at it, yeah. money does buy happiness because yeah. we live in a country where people say universal health care. Mm. Yeah, universal health care, my left right there. <laughs> Let me tell you that. Yeah. It is universal health care. I know. But to an extent. And then yes. a four-year waiting list. A four-year sure. waiting list. <laughs> yeah. Or you got to pay, thank you, dad, yeah. $2,000 a month plus yeah. the medication yeah. or whatever just to get yeah. me. And people message me all the time. Oh, my gosh. How do you do this? How do you do that? I'm like, listen, the money that my dad's forking out, I better mm -hmm. be this way. Yes. yes. I better be get. I better be able to quote unquote look and act like a normal person yeah. when we're forking out that much yeah, yeah, money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which sucks to yeah. say that. Yeah. It sucks to say that you need to spend so much money in order to live a happy, healthy life. Yeah. But like we say, it's the world we live in. So you know, you, you can't fight it. So in reality we need it. Right? That's so why we all money. chase it. Mm -hmm. Been chasing. <laughs> and we're gonna keep chasing. And we're gonna keep, we gonna keep chasing. Literally, literally. Listen, Mary, we won't keep you too long. We have, we have a dance party waiting. Yes, we do. Us. And donuts. So, and donuts. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate Thank you the for conversation. Sharing that. Yeah, yeah. I love you guys. Thank you. Yeah, no, we love it's, you. It's uh, you know, it, it'll go a long way. A lot of people will listen to this and and take a lot from it. And you're doing a lot of good, you know, for everybody. And and we need more people like you. So continue being you. Continue keep going, inspiring. Keep going. Continue doing everything you're doing and more. I hope it grows bigger and larger and, and it goes on forever for you. But again, thank you so much. And with that, Dean, we're out. Mm -hmm.